Hello, here I am with another Advent of Code challenge. This one is called uh, Conway Cubes. It's day 17. You can read the details, but essentially it's a Conway's game of life in three dimensions. And I've written an animation in Unity, in C Sharp. So you start out with a certain configuration of live cells at the hash positions here. So this is just, um, it's a, it's a three-dimensional space and you are to insert this group of live cells at uh, Z equals zero uh, in the middle of your space. And then you apply the rules which are if a cell has two or three neighbors and it's alive, it stays alive, otherwise it dies. And if a cell is not alive and it has exactly two neighbors, then it becomes alive. And you run six cycles and then you um, supply to the puzzle how many live cells there are at the end. So let me run this in Unity. This is the starting configuration that I loaded from that file. This is one, uh, the next generation, and two, and this goes all the way up to six, three, four, five, getting more, and finally six. And you probably can't see it, but in the bottom left corner it says cycle six has 263. So I went to the problem and I put in 263 and I got that right. Now the second half of the puzzle is, is four dimensional. So I'm not going to try to visualize that in Unity. But let me walk you through the code that produces that animation and uh, finds the result. Uh, here we are, C-sharp code. There's a script called simulation. And the cube, uh, there's a prefab for the cubes. So the cubes are generated from, they're cloned from this prefab. And then I um, looked at the size of the starting state and decided that um, 16 by 16 by 16 should hold it given uh, the rules and the six cycles. And this creates a three-dimensional array of transforms, which are Unity objects that hold um, indirectly a game object, which is the cube in this case. And the start method runs once at the beginning. And here we call build space. And then we start a coroutine, which um, waits for four seconds and then makes the next generation and does that six times. Okay, so let's see, what should we look at next? Let's look at build space. This um, creates this three-dimensional array of transforms. And then this is the starting config text up here. So we're reading that in and splitting it on new lines. So we end up with, uh, with an array of strings called lines. And then we make a two-dimensional integer vector of the starting config size, which is, the, which is x and y. And then we have to do a little bit of um, figuring out how to position that in the center of our 16 by 16 by 16 cube. So that's what this is with the center offset here. And then for all cells is a function we'll see down below that is basically a, a Z loop within a Y loop within an X loop to give us all the different uh, cells. So 16 to the third uh, number of iterations. And we start out by assuming that the um, space that the cube there is false, is not alive. And then we instantiate, this is a unity function that 
creates one of the cubes in the world. And this is where it is. Um, so X and Z and Y is dim minus Y. Oh, um, so that they're not appearing upside down. And quaternion identity means don't rotate it. Just leave it alone. And then when we're running through these all these combinations of x, y, and z values, when we get to the to the middle on z, then we instantiate this plane of live cells. Um, if we find the hash, then we set alive to true. And if the if we're if it's not alive, then we use this unity method to set the cube inactive, which makes it not rendered. It's not shown. And then we add the cube to the three-dimensional array of transforms, and then we return that. Okay, so that is build space. Next is generate next. And this goes through and finds the number of neighbors and decides whether to leave the cube alive or kill it or spawn a new one in the place. And we have to have a separate three-dimensional array for the uh, active states for the next generation without disrupting the current one. So that's why we create this three-dimensional array of bools. Uh, called num called new actives, and then for all the cells we find the number of neighbors. We note whether this space is active, and then we set active for the new generation based on whether we're active now or not. If we are active now, then if the number of neighbors is two or three, we remain active. If we're not active now, then and the number of neighbors is three. Um, I think I misspoke before when I said uh, you generate one when there are two neighbors. But if there are three neighbors and you're not active, then it becomes active. And then this is just some logging so you can see what's going on. And then if we are, uh, if, if there is an active, we're basically we're counting the number of uh, actives. And then here, our three-dimensional bool array we uh, set the appropriate value for that. Then we go through and turn on and off the cubes. We tell Unity which ones are active or not from this um, new actives, this three-dimensional array of pools. And then we return the number of new actives because we need to know the count of them so we can plug it in as the answer to the puzzle. And then here's this for all cells, and it's just uh, a loop within a loop within a loop, and it just calls the action and passes it X and Y and Z. And this one computes the number of neighbors. So uh, a cube has three times, well, the, the neighbors, if you imagine a, a cell and then its neighbors as a cube, three by three by three, uh, which would be 27, you subtract the one in the middle, so they're up to 26. Well, there, there are 26 neighbors. Well, it depends. If you're on an edge, there would be fewer, or a corner, there would be, there'd be fewer still. Uh, so this goes through all the values from minus 1 to 1 for, for delta x, delta y, delta z, and then sees if that point is in bounds and it's not the center then it looks to see if the, if the cube there is active. And if it is, it adds one to num, and then it returns the number of neighbors. It's really number of live neighbors, I should call that. And finally, there's inbounds. And inbounds is called here. And it's just a way of given a given a triple of x, y, and z coordinates. It tells you whether 
um, all three of those coordinates are in bounds. So no negative numbers, no numbers that are uh, uh, greater than or equal to the dim, the dimension. And that's it. So I think I'll just run it one more time as we leave. Here it goes. Reads in the file of the initial state. There it is. Applies those rules to make the next generation and the next generation and so on. Um, all right. See you next time.